Hi folks, it's Andy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, so here we are for another week of fantastic questions. Uh, once again, I am sorry for the uh, camera setup, the lighting, the sound, all that sort of thing. I'm still traveling in Japan at the minute, um, so uh, I don't have my usual setup. I don't have my usual microphone and all the other stuff, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, <laughs> um, should From the ne next time, next time we should be back to normal. Okay, so sorry about that. Um before we jump into these questions, we've got some great ones. Uh, first thing I'd say is don't forget to like, share, subscribe, you know, all the YouTube stuff, but most importantly, support the channel by shopping at kendostar.com, the best kendo equipment website in the known universe. Of course, I'd say that because I own the place, but everyone agrees to shop at kendostar.com. <laughs> okay, so uh one last thing is all before i jump in i'm gonna have to apologize a bit i can't be my usual sort of exuberant self <laughs> it's like midnight or something here uh, and <laughs> i don't want to wake up the entire neighborhood so um yeah sorry <laughs> right let's get to these questions shall we right what have we got first we've got uh let me turn that a bit right we have got Hello, Andy Sensei. I hope you are, uh, you and your family are doing well. The president of the Kendo Federation is visiting our dojo. I was just wondering what the correct etiquette is when high level sensei is visiting. Thank you and have a great day. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much. I just make sure that um, everything's comfortable for the visit. Uh, you don't have to go crazy over it. Um, you know, just make sure that they are well guided they know where everything is where the dojo is where they're supposed to get changed maybe just make sure somebody sort of stays stays with them to make sure that they're not confused about anything and they know which direction to go in and all that sort of thing um and if they need any help with anything just make sure you're on hand to do that um obviously if they if they're the, like the highest graded person there as well make sure they sit in the right place in the lineup and all that uh, and generally, generally, just be polite, and I think that'll go a long way. <laughs> to be honest, okay, and well, welcoming. Uh, hi, Andy. Any pointers for developing better men, Sudiagi men? Uh, it's the most difficult waza for me, and somehow it is either a I have uh, the Sudiagi motion too big, or concentrate too much on this part, and then my becomes a problem. Or B, I can't really slide off the IT Shinai enough and would ra would have better just stuck with I men or Dibana men or Nuki men uh, asking for a Yondan friend. <laughs> okay, um, Men Tsuriyagi men is, is quite a tough waza. Um, it's all it's all about using the Shinai properly and using good tenochi, uh using the good wrist. Uh, obviously, I don't have much room to, to work with here. I've got a couple of pens here. But one comes for the men this way, and the other is just. How can I explain? As this comes here, as it's as it's coming down, we're just it, the study I is this upward upward motion. But you don't want to go this way. This is too much. Like if if I can get my hands on the camera, my study I is gonna be pam pam this way. Bam 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 pam pam. Just that is enough. <laughs> For the most part to to make sudiage yeah so that when this one comes here when the, when this one comes here it's just there it's that tap there that bit of tenage in the wrist that's really going to make the waza work and then from there pam, dropping it back onto the men pam pam this way without lifting it too high and making the motion too big um it's hard was it's hard was um it's about getting the right timing but also getting the right tenochi um i'm not gonna lie at yondan it's hard <laughs> yeah um <clears throat> i actually probably don't think i started doing suriage uh successfully until quite recently um at least not to, to a sort of decent decent standard what i was doing before was probably something more like uh like a kind of had i rather than a than a sudiage uh and what what i mean by that is we normally think of as of had i was as as where you would uh bash or, or beat the other person's come i out the way before hitting which is but i would use that technique on the down strike of their shinai and 
spat it to the side and then hit rather than so it become a two-step motion like pam pam like this i'd sort of jump backwards as i did it to try and get the distance i guess it wasn't until yeah pretty recently <coughs> um probably well into uh godan uh, and maybe even into rokudan i started getting the hang of suriage properly so don't beat yourself up over it or your friend doesn't need to beat himself up over it <laughs> okay uh next one handy could you talk about the shin i mean the felt layers that you use inside the borga Seeing they use an extra layer in the Vanguard and V2, is it a synthetic material or wool? Uh, some sellers use red Morsen felt, but normally nobody really know what, knows what's inside the Menfton. Uh, I think it's a good idea if you could talk a little about that. Thank you. Um, <coughs> so the shin is the pattern inside of the Futon, of the Borgu. Um, so basically you have, you have this sort of padding it's made of like a, in our case, it's, it's our own blended felt. Um, and uh, it's then basically wrapped in, for one of the better words, a, uh, like a eyes on a cotton, reinforced, and then stitched over. Okay. Uh, we use our own blend of, uh, of, uh felt for it it's our own sort of formula um it's it's synthetic it's not um it's not wool uh the red morsen felt um that's not used on much borger these days to be honest um it's used on some very very uh expensive hand stitch sets but for the most part it's not uh used very much anymore and um, there's no advantage to it being red at all of course and um, it's kind of old-fashioned a bit um, and I found that you get better performance out of the sort of modern materials like that we use that's why we use it to be honest <coughs> so yeah <laughs> okay uh, let's see well, thank you for my f uh, father's armor says no problem neither he nor I can wait for it to arrive good um, Japan, as well as many other countries where kendo is being practiced, has an aging population. It may not be uh, too far in the distant future when a significant proportion of beginners will not be physic physically capable of fumikomi or large cuts. How do you see uh, kendo adapting to an aging society? Mm, I'm not sure I agree with you. Definitely not in Japan. <laughs> Definitely not in Japan. Um, I don't see you'll have a significant proportion of beginners being elderly people. Uh, I can't see that happening, to be honest. Um, and uh, I'm not even sure if it will happen elsewhere either. Um, I don't know. Uh, but obviously, if it does, then obviously things will be be different. Um, <coughs> Premi call me is 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 uh, is obviously something that that is important part of the sort of Kendall. Uh, curriculum should we say but uh you know there's people in their sort of 80s and even 90s that can do from uh yeah it's not the same from the that sort of 20 year olds do um but they can still do it so yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure i'm not sure i see it happening i don't see it having to adapt to an aging society and um, the, the the opposite pro the problem we've got instead with Kendall is, especially in Japan, is there is a very aged population. Um, you know, there's not many children being born uh, and the population is, is aging significantly. Um, that doesn't equal that the, the second, you know, a proportion of beginners are older. It just means there's less kids starting Kendall. Um, it's not that there's more people. That's why Kendo is declining in Japan um, at quite an alarming rate, to be honest. And the last couple of years have definitely not helped that. That's a whole different topic. <laughs> uh, Sensei, I hope your year is going well for you and your family. Yeah, uh, so far so good. Um, <laughs> as a Jordan player, I've won a major tournament. Uh, in my limited Mitori Yeko, I've not seen one even in the quarterfinals. Is it just because there are relatively fewer of them? <clears throat> I think that's a good question. First off, I'd um, depends how you define a major tournament. If you're talking about all Japan level, 
Uh, yeah, of course, there have been Jordan champions. There, haven't been, there hasn't been a Jordan champion for quite some time now, um, actually. Um, the last one was, what, like 10 years ago, something like that. Quite a famous player. Unfortunately, career ended with controversy. Um, I'm sure those of you who know who I'm talking about will know, uh, know what that is about. If not, don't worry too much about it. Um, the uh, but yeah, um, you don't see uh, Jordan players sort of achieve success the same success as Chudan players as often. Um, it's it's it is partly because there's relatively few of them, but there's, there's relatively few of them because it's harder to become successful doing Jordan. Um, you know, uh the, the vast majority of Ken Doka, uh start Jordan, not necessarily because they're good at Jordan, <laughs> but often it's because they're not very good at Chudan um, or just because they're big um, and they're not that sort of, um, they're not showing that much potential. So their sort of teacher will tell them to do Jordan so that they might at least achieve the Hikiwake rather than lose in the Shi'ai and they still might be able to use them and that's that's kind of a common pot pattern unfortunately so um, I don't think but I think I do think sorry that is is sort of part of the reason uh, to be honest um, yeah I mean if you know you know statistically Chudan is a more successful Kamai than Jordan and if it wasn't, Jordan would be more popular, wouldn't it? So in the past, it's been different. In the past, you know, when the rules were different, um, they've, you know, there's, there, there was, there's been sort of booms of, of successful Jordan plays. But still, I don't think it's been a case where there's been like loads of them. There's, there's been one or two in over the course of history, maybe four or five, that have done done exceptionally well. Um, and it, it does pale in comparison to the number of, of people who've been very successful in Chudan. Um, and you tend to find that those people who are very successful in Jordan are somewhat exceptional. Um, and they're also generally really, really good at Chudan as well as Jordan. Uh, it's just that they're really good at Ch Kendall, whichever Kamai they use. Okay, next one. Hi, Fish Sensei. Uh, the other day I got to do Keiko with a person from another dojo whom I struggled quite a bit. Uh, what happened is that after strike, every single strike, he started right from a little past my Uchima. Uh, I know in Shi'ai most of his strikes wouldn't really be valid since he was a tall guy and he wouldn't have, he would have been striking my men past his Shinai Dototobu. But ignoring him and only focusing on myself, I had a really hard time reacting to his waza. Every time I tried to put some distance, he would just basically get too close to me to do anything uh, besides maybe a poorly executed hikiwaza. My question is, how should I handle people who constantly deny my mai? Uh, I know I shouldn't get sucked into their rhythm, but it's kind of tough not to feel literally cornered in those moments. For context, I only recently passed Shodan uh, last December, so of course there are many waza I haven't even gone over yet, let alone be proficient with. Uh, I hope I managed to make sense of my question. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a common problem people suffer with. Um, so, I think I think the problem here is that the interaction that you're um, having with your partner is beginning too late. All right? So, you need to be ready earlier. <laughs> <laughs> right so you know you do sonkyo stand up you should be ready and if they stand step into your mind then then you should be ready to go you should be ready to go and if they're going to step up in, step in here bam you can still hit can't you do you know what I mean you, 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 you know if they you know here's 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 I guess where where there's probably a little bit of confusion. See this, this little past my uchima. Like, your uchima, when you're doing kihon, you've got sort of your uchima distance. But when you're doing keiko, it's not sort of set in stone, right? You have to be able to, you have to be a bit flexible and be able to hit from various distances. If they're very close, if, if they're, you know, if they're very close, then 
you can still you don't have to make a full massive step when you do the fumikomi you can still hit them with a smaller step so that you can still strike correctly yeah just because they've stepped in close doesn't mean that you have to make this massive step for your fumikomi, fumikomi meaning that your waza in, are invalid right so i think that's part of what that is um and you know maybe after you've made a strike you should probably aim to get a bit more separation so that they have to make that bit of extra effort to get back in to the that close distance so you've got more time to respond to that so you can hit them as they're starting to step in or you know see how they react when when you start to step in or, or whatever you've got to experiment a little bit do you know what i mean but um i wouldn't worry about it too much um but what i wouldn't do is is get locked into this idea that you've only got one uchima uchima being your hitting distance right you don't have to make you know you're allowed to make strikes from chikama as well you know they're not invalid you do have to strike with the correct part of the shinai and then you just have to be flexible with your footwork right um i guess that's what, what i'd say <laughs> Okay, next one. Hi Andy Sensei, Happy New Year. I've been watching videos on YouTube and I found that some Kendall cuts such as uh, Hyoga Kajitani or Suenaga Mari or Yamamoto Mariko, yeah, Sensei keeps moving their foot all the time whilst old Kendoka look like they're not moving it at all. Could you please explain the differences between these footworks? Sorry if my question's not clear. It is clear, but, you know, um, this is where... This is where it can be a bit difficult for us to grasp some of the concepts of Kendo. Um, everybody's, you know, to some extent, there's, there's, especially past a certain level, everyone has a sort of style. I hesitate to use that word because, you know, but you know, lo lo the, there's some players that move their feet around a lot, some that don't move around all that much. Um, it doesn't mean that there's some that can just put their left, you know, I don't know, like just do, do something totally radical and say that's my style, that's not what I mean. But, um, you know, what I am so sort of talking about is, uh, you know, this this sort of, yeah, some especially these younger ones, you know, like uh, uh, the ones you mentioned, you know, they're like in their 20s or, 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 or sort of 30s, early 30s. They can still move around a lot. And, if, you know, if you're comparing them to somebody who's in their 50s or 60s, yeah, of course, they're not going to move around the same. <coughs> Especially as they're doing Kendall from a different perspective. Um, <coughs> and I don't think it's correct that it's not moving at all. Uh, it might look like that to you, but it's unlikely that their feet are not moving at all or they're sort of completely planted. Um, so the differences between the footwork is somewhat related to age and also related to the um, the, the individual <coughs> style or strategy of uh, the kendoka as well. Um, <coughs> as you sort of develop uh, in kendo, uh, then you, you sort of find a way, and it changes as you develop as well. To be honest, question. Them. Okay, next one. Uh, it's a long one. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. Um, hi, Sensei. Happy New Year. Hope you and your family are well and have enjoyed or enjoying the holidays. Um, I have a bold question for you. I feel like you've answered this in the month before, but I can't for the love of me remember which one it was in. I bought my first Borger set, a Vanguard X Protective. Thank you. From Kendo Star through my club back in late April, early May. Uh, this set is honestly amazing, especially after wearing Club Borg for about two months. I felt uh, as light as a feather once I got it, and at the same time, I couldn't feel the hits anymore. However, recently, after gaining a little more experience and the ball were breaking in more and more, I've started seeing a little issue with the men's size. No matter how I tie it, if I grab the ski daddy, I can easily pop my chin out. This also happens to me every time someone does ski on me. That sounds weird. Uh, also, I've asked Senpai and Sensei multiple times if I've tied it correctly, and the voice said it is tied as it should be. Uh, I've also tried tying it a little bit higher and lower, a bit tighter, a bit looser. But the issue is that every time when I was buying it, I measured using the guidance on the Kendo Style website and I double, triple checked the measurements. Uh, and when I got the set, the issue wasn't there. Everything felt normal. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe I 
and not really measured properly and my head has got smaller. So my question is, is there a way to adjust the men so that it fits me better? Is it worth getting in contact with your team? I don't want to waste time. Or should I try getting a men pad or chin pad instead? Sorry for the long question. And thank you so much for your contribution to Kindle Community. No, thank you. Uh, it was your videos that inspired me to contact my local dojo once it reopened and started practicing Kendo and I'm loving every second. Oh, good. That's great. That's 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 a great thing to hear. Um, look, it's, it's hard for me to understand exactly what the problem is here without seeing it myself. So the first thing I recommend is, yes, get in touch with us. Send us some pictures. Send us some pictures. Um, I understand that, uh, you know, the, the people in your dojo have said they don't see an issue with how you're tying it, but this sort of thing does sound like that. <laughs> um, you should tie the men pretty much as tight as you can, right? If, if you're able to pull it off your chin, to be honest, even if it was too big, even if it was like a centimetre or two too big, if you tie it properly, you're not going to be able to just pull it off. So if, if, if it's slipping off your chin, the chances are you're not tying it tight enough, um, to be honest, all right? Um, mm, so I don't think it's a sizing issue, especially as it wasn't there before. But as, you know, as we start Kendall and sort of the months pass by in the beginning, we sort of go through different phases of tying our men, should I say, doing it in different ways, not necessarily consciously. So, mm, sounds like it's not being tied tight enough more than anything. But send us some pictures, mail at kendostyle.com and we'll have a look and see what the best way to solve it is. All right. Uh, next one, is there a case uh, is there any case of someone who's so good that he or she skipped the mandatory years of practice to pass a grade? Um, possibly. I've never heard of it, though. Okay. I've never heard of it. According to the uh, grading guidelines on the Zen Ken then, um, it's, it's technically possible, I think. Um, absolutely never heard of it. Possible. Could have but it's not something that's, that, that I've ever heard of. Uh, hello Andy, since your knowledge of Borga is considerable, <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask you about its origin, in particular the design of the men is very similar to the face mask used in European fencing. I guess the materials are different, but essentially the design is much alike. Is this coincidence? Thank you very much for everything you do for the Kendall community. Um, well, I think it's unlikely I'm no expert, certainly, on fencing, European fencing equipment. But it wouldn't surprise me if that was sort of developed or developing around a similar era to the, the early Kendall Borg. And it would, be, it would surprise me, it, it wouldn't surprise me, sorry, if there, there was some kind of cross-influence cross, cross influence there. Um, so it is certainly possible. I've never seen any record of it. But at the same time, <clears throat> you know, there's only, there's only, you know, a few ways to do the same sort of thing in the most sort of practical way, right? Um, so, mm, I don't know for sure is the answer. <laughs> but uh, I can imagine both scenarios being correct that yes there was sort of some cross influence um or it just happens to be somewhat similar um so yeah i don't know enough about the fencing equipment really to say how similar it is or not to be fair mm. i think there was a period though that they did that uh what was it called shinai kyogi or something when kendall was banned when they were trying to get it back i'm not I'm not good with the Kendall history stuff. You need to, you need to see George at Kench two four seven for that. But um, the uh, um, they sort of use equipment that looked more like fencing equipment, didn't they? But the the, the Kendall ball does predate that. Um, okay, next one. Hello, Fish Sensei. I wanted to get your opinion on effective solo practice to supplement training with dojo mates. Uh, I set up a striking dummy at my gym and was wondering if you had any input on how to best utilize it outside striking, somebody and such. Best wishes, hope you're in a family. Well, thank you. Um, 
unfortunately, I don't think there is like a secret formula you can do <laughs> um, in terms of, you know, what you can do with the striking dummy. Um, the best thing you can do with the striking dummy is use it to develop your tenuity, your striking technique uh, is the very best thing you can do with it. Um, I want to say something's a bit, you know, I, I say this quite a lot, it's quite unpopular, but um, I think the most effective solo practice you can do is Mitori Yeko. That's a watching practice. Um, watching Kendo, uh, watching your own Kendo, filming your own Kendo. Um, go and have a look at the Kendo Tips channel. Um, Jose over there has, has, has put up a, a clip from the live stream that we did together recently uh, where I talked about how I sort of fast-tracked my own Kendall progress in the beginning uh, using uh, video practice. And uh, it was really effective for me. Um, and, and that's the best solo practice I've found so far rather than, you know, having a striking... I've never had a striking dummy. Um, a couple of my dojos that I've been at sort of part of in Japan have had them and have sort of whacked them a few times, but I've never sort of counted them massively as a huge, um, important part of my kind of training. But I do know people that have, but I think the best use for developing, uh, you know, the correct tenuity. Well, yeah, that's that. Okay. Last one. Sorry if this is late. What is your take on the issue of having high level, female divisions in Kendo Shia. The issue of having, is, is that an issue? Um, uh, I don't think there's an issue with it, personally. Um, uh, there's lots of high level female Kendo Shia. All Japan Women's Championships, World Championships has a, a female division. Um, all Japan prefectural's police championships, the highest level Shi'ai basically have uh, female divisions. Um, I think is this in reference to something, something else? Um, in maybe outside of Japan. Let me have a look. Okay, so I just looked into this a bit. I knew I knew I sort of recalled something. I think this is in reference to a Shi'ai in Europe. Uh, yeah, um, I, th I think I think uh, having a um, a female division of Denishia is a good thing if it's possible. Uh, I think that's a good good thing to do. I don't think there's any good reason to have a a, a division that would only be for men, um, or 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 should I say? only have a men's division and not an equivalent female division um, unless obviously there aren't any participants um, and I also see that you know there's, there's also the potential to have uh, like a mix or open division as well it could work I'll see that um, I think the context of, of what this question is possibly referring to is like a seventh dan tournament um, and I'm neither seventh dan or female, so it's not like it's not an issue that affects me directly. Um, so it's easy for me to say I don't have an issue with it. <laughs> uh, to be honest, um, but without you know, um, best person to ask is probably high level female Kendoka <laughs> um, directly. Um, yeah, but yeah, for me, my, my take on it, my, to get back to the question, my take on it is, yeah, I think it's, it's a good idea to have a female division of any Kendo Shi'ai. Um, I think I've made my stance quite clear on how supportive I am of um, women in Kendo. I've got a whole video about it. Uh, that did with my life. Um, so yeah, there we are. We're at the end. 
Uh, thank you for joining me all the way to the end here. Again, I'm sorry that uh, it's it was a little bit on the sort of low key. I couldn't do my normal, um, my normal sort of level of uh, enthusiasm. I am very enthusiastic as always, but it is very late at night here, and I don't want to. I don't want to get complaints from the neighbours or the rest of the household. <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining me don't forget to like share subscribe most importantly shop at kendo and i'll see you next time bye bye